It's that time of year when the pantry shelves are becoming more and more barren with colorful spots of ball jars, mason jars filled with goodness. We've gone through quite a bit, which I'm super excited about. Uh, we've used up what we have canned and that makes me happy. So it's time to make some strawberry jam and I've been going out every morning and picking what strawberries are close to being ready or ready and just kind of tucking them away this week. So I have enough to make a couple batches of strawberry jam and I'm going to be making it with honey instead of sugar. So we'll see how it turns out. We've been trying to cut sugar out as much as we can, the refined sugar. So we're trying to use a little bit more of all natural sugars like maple sugar and this today we're using honey we have a plethora of honey here on the farm so it works out pretty well and I'm gonna see how this does I will link the recipe below so I'm gonna head out here and pick some strawberries and add them to what I have already I'm gonna get it going on the stove because it's gonna be warm today and I want I don't want to heat the kitchen up too much so I'm gonna go ahead and start and I'm gonna take you along So for this strawberry jam made with honey, I am measuring out about three pounds of strawberries. I've washed and hauled each strawberry and I'm placing in my blender because I don't have a food processor at the moment. To my three pounds of strawberries that I've pureed, I'm adding in three fourths cup of sugar. I guess you could use regular sugar if you'd like. I used maple sugar. I added 3 fourths cup honey, two teaspoons vanilla extract, one teaspoon bottled lemon juice, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I've pureed this till it is nice and smooth and I'm adding it to a tall pot on the stove. I need to cook this down for about an hour and a half. This is going to just thicken on the stove and when you get the frothy bubbles on the top, you basically can add a little bit of butter if you want to the top, or you can skim off before you can. And I'm bringing it up to a boil. I'm stirring frequently so that it doesn't scorch. I'll lower the heat and simmer until the mixture is very, very thick, about 60 to 90 minutes. I'm stirring frequently and just keeping an eye on it. I'm gonna use a jar filler to fill my jars, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of vinegar to a rag and wipe the tops clean. Adding my clean rings and lids, I'm going to process in the processor for about 10 minutes. In this case, I'm just using a water bath canner. I'll remove the jars and set them on the counter. It always looks so beautiful. I'm gonna let them sit for about overnight or about a day, 24 hours. This is the first thing checked off on my list every single year as far as processing and canning throughout the year. I'm so excited to get this, make this milestone and it feels so good to be back in the kitchen. Today, <laughs> today um, is Friday, but Beth yesterday was making a ton of jam, as you guys saw. And so today, Emma and I are gonna be test kitcheny in it. We're gonna be like judges of chopped. Be like, this sucks. Or no. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's really gonna taste. I amazing. already dipped my finger in it yesterday. It was great. <laughs> no, it's always gonna be good. Uh, so we're making a little breakfast with. Jam and mom made bread, which I can't eat, but like enjoy it for me. And I will. I'm gonna make some eggs with some garlic scapes that we got from the garden. And we really enjoy garlic scapes. They're like another way of enjoying garlics earlier in the season. They have like a really distinct flavor that's like different. 
from like garlic clove. And we like to freeze it, sometimes we pickle it. So I'm gonna make some eggs because this is hot now. The jam is amazing. It's more of like a honey butter jam and strawberry, of course, but it's very honey tasting. I really love it. It tastes so good. I've been dipping my finger in it like constantly. <laughs> 10 out of 10. So I have about 10 yards of soil coming and uh, got to move those into place. So I have three raised beds for the vegetable garden that we're putting in. And then I have one large raised bed that is done and ready in the new little hoop house. And so I'm getting that done as well. I'm not looking forward to it because it, I don't have a tractor and I have to move it by wheelbarrow and it just keeps me in shape. So I'm gonna do that. Jason is gonna help me and Riley. Um, she's been really taking on this garden this year. So she's gonna help as well. The reason we have to bring in soil and do raised beds, one, I really like to garden that way. Two, um, we tend to get wet back here in the vegetable area. Well, not necessarily right where the vegetable garden is right now, but around it, there's a, we kind of live close to wetlands, so we have a really high water table. And so in the winter time, we do get some puddles that just kind of stay and the ducks love it, but I don't. And in order for me to do year round farming, I have to put in some raised beds and I actually really like it. I'm getting older and, is just easy to do and I can rotate the beds really easily by myself especially that I don't have a tractor it just works out and I love the look of it I think it is just so darling and so I'm just excited to put it in and it's a little more creative and that's how I always have been with my gardens there's nothing that is just utilitarian about them so I'm gonna be doing that today I'm gonna show you around really quick and uh, just show you kind of what's happening here on the little vegetable garden what's growing so we live in wine country you can see up there is grapes uh, which is really beautiful for this garden here the vegetable garden is just pretty small this is something we put in very early on just raised beds um, we have some cattle panels for you know things like um, beans and peas growing up so i believe we have three different varieties of peas that we planted growing up this side they're doing pretty good. We had a really, really hot uh, May, and now we're having this nice, normal, cool June. 
and so everything is just really loving it i love you guys this is an heirloom variety i think riley got this i should have her here with me because she knows all the varieties but i had her get this from heirloom seeds um, or baker creek heirloom seeds and this one is super yummy and i think one is a french variety one is a shelling pea I think this is the French variety. It's just like a one you could put in a stir fry. Delicious. Really, really tasty. Very, very sweet. This is one of my favorite things to do is come out to the garden, grab some peas this time of year. I don't necessarily put them up or anything like that. It's just mainly for, you know, eating while you're working. Green beans are like that too. I like to grab those. Uh, raspberries, pretty much anything in the garden I'll grab as a snack. And I can't read Riley's writing, but we have <laughs> some green beans coming up here really nicely. They're going to trellis up. This is a heirloom variety. She's got some squash back there. She planted them a little bit close, but I'm going to let her learn. We have everything hooked up on drip system in these gardens as well. I think we have the time on too much, but look at this, you guys. These are already putting on some green beans. So I should probably get out here and harvest because there's quite a few actually. Really nice ones. I'll have her do that. She'll be excited. So I have several kinds of kale going this way. Um, I need to get this in and harvest and we freeze that as well. There's tons of peas we need to get off. Some butter lettuce and a stray sunflower, which I'm just going to leave because that's going to be gorgeous. More lettuces. We have a butter and I believe I have a leaf lettuce. We've been eating on this quite a bit. And this is um, a Waldman's green lettuce. And then I have a butter crunch here. Delicious, both of them. We've been eating them every single night and then on sandwiches. These are parsnips. I'm not sure when, to, oh, it looks like I can harvest now. This one looks great. Can you see the crown right there? I don't know if I can get it, but we'll try it here. These kind of self-seeded, so we'll see. They're not very big, but they smell delicious. Riley has some celery going on here. We have some collard greens back there. They're starting to go to seed since we had such a hot May. The purple cabbage, you can see it there. I had this netting on because we had the ducks out for a while. They're put away now. Our garlic tops are turning. I'm eating my green bean. Asparagus bed needs weeded, but look, there's some carrots down here. Riley was super excited. She has carrots. So first off, I wanted to show you the hops are doing amazing this year. You can see them trellising up. We have several different varieties. I might be able to tell you what they are, but I might not. So we use these mainly for decorative things like design work. But this year, my son probably will make something with it. He's doing a viticulture class and going to school for winemaking because that's a huge part of what we do here in the Pacific Northwest. Winemaking and he mainly wants to be a farmer, he says. He wants to manage the land, which is really cool. But aren't they beautiful? Emma and I went ahead and fertilized, cleaned them up this year, and they are doing beautiful. So this is my large rhubarb plant. I'm going to just harvest a little bit there, and then I have another one that is on the other side there. So we have a lot of construction going on in the vegetable garden. It's a little late for us, but winter gardening is more what I can do well compared to summer gardening. We do have like some squash and beans and things like that. But here in the Pacific Northwest, we're able to do that. So the rhubarb I have is um, a white variety, which I understand that there's these, back in the day, there was these terracotta pots that would go over rhubarb to blanch them or make them white, uh, but that's what I have. So I guess they must have come up with a variety that could do that. Uh, one thing 
that you want to make sure and do is make sure that the leaves on the bottom underneath are kind of cleaned up and I haven't done a very good job of that but anything that's kind of brown or dead and you don't want to cut the rhubarb you want to twist and kind of pull out and that just helps keep down on disease I don't know I read that it's not something I just like brilliant gardener here um, so I'm gonna get these cleaned up and harvest what I can off of them um, I think you're supposed to take only one-third of the plant off but these are looking amazing I love kind of that um, look of them as well because it's kind of that I know Jurassic Park kind of vibe to it kind of you know Mediterranean or uh, not Mediterranean um, kind of that tropical vibe to it and I've always loved just adding in a little bit of tropical to the whole cottage garden feel or the potager garden. Mornings are always my favorite time of the day to get things done and I think it's the quiet of it. There's just a stillness about the gardens. The birds are chirping or the only ones awake with me and my mind doesn't race as much as um, it is during the full full um, throttle of the day's work. So I'm able to get some things done that I really enjoy doing that are not related to flowers necessarily, but related to the vegetable garden and homemaking and creating something beautiful for the coming fall, winter, and early spring. There's definitely kind of like a twist and pull kind of method. I was thinking that you just twist and it just comes off, but no, you definitely have to pull. So this is the first time I've harvested these uh, rhubarb since I planted them a year ago or two years ago. It could be, oh my gosh. But this is looking fantastic. I'll take it in. I've cleaned up the undercarriage of all. You can see there's lots of new shoots coming up, which is kind of fun. And then we have some older ones. I'm sure I could harvest just a little bit more off of this. I'm so new at this. Ooh. Look at that stalk. That's huge. Normally we don't like them this big because they can be a little bit um, grainy, I think. But... I thought I would get that big bad boy out and <clears throat> it'll be fine once I cook it up. I'm gonna chop it up and freeze it for now, but once I cook it up, I think it's gonna be just fantastic. So it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna grab just a couple more stalks from this last guy. I love this overcast day. It makes it so it's much more tolerable in the garden harvest. So there it is, my rhubarb harvest. The leaves are toxic, so we're gonna take those off and get them washed up and chopped up. It'll be fun to see how this garden develops as it goes it's in my mind's eye I have like some really cool designs for it in fact right next to it is going to be kind of an area where we can have tables and dinners and that kind of thing it does have a beautiful view out here and um, it's just kind of away from the house and it's gonna be more of like a Mediterranean or like a low water garden just because we kind of live in this area now where it used to not be like this but we got a ton of rain year round Oregon's known for being wet and rainy it's not really that way anymore so we have kind of a wet season and then we have a really hot dry season that you know we get fires and stuff so it's beautiful though beautiful area to live in and um, so anyways I just want to do something a little bit creative and beautiful here with just you know like some Russian sage and a lot of herbs and I've got these really cool I didn't uh, we got these the other day these are some just old drainage irrigation um, or tile basically for field tiles so my idea for them is I'm gonna stand them upright I'm gonna stand them upright and put like some more tropical type not tropical but more dry 
um, you know, things like succulents or cacti, things that will just have like a ton of rock in the base of it. So it drains really well, but does well in our, our climate, like when it does get cold. And uh, so I'm going to kind of, there's, this is, this is kind of sloped right here. So I'm going to put like some rocks in and some of these irrigation tiles and, you know, it's going to be beautiful. Well, I'm going to head back into the kitchen and take my rhubarb with me, get it washed up, cleaned. I have a whole bunch of stuff to do in the studio today. We have orders, wrapping my brain around that. Um, I have orders to do and, and I'm gonna go visit a friend. Her mother just passed. So we're gonna go actually to the memorial and I'm gonna take something for that. And um, yeah, and then later today I'm gonna be moving all that dirt, but I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about it because I love doing projects as you know. Okay, so I'm heading in. Clouds are moving this way. It looks like there's going to be some rain. Well, thank you so much for joining me today in my kitchen as the preserving start of the year has begun. I'm so excited to get this year underway with all the things that we're going to enjoy in the winter and fall and spring and all the things. I will put the recipe for the strawberry honey jam down below for you if you would like to try it. It is beautiful, it tastes a lot like honey, and it's got mixed with that fresh strawberry that just tastes like you went and picked one and popped it in your mouth. Delicious, I love it. Also, let me know what you are canning up now or pickling or all the good homemaking things that you're trying out. And until next time, much success in all you do and grow, and we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House as we delve into I went to Dancing Oaks Nursery and picked up some great things. So that's gonna be on the next video as we redo some of the garden pots and just styling of the gardens. Anyways, toodaloo.